Hello everyone, this is Medicine in 3 Minutes, and today we're talking about circumventricular organs, part 1. I specify part 1 because the subject is going to be broken down into 7 different videos because there is 7 organs. So the previous so uh, video we talked about the blood-brain barrier, um, we talked about the different capillaries that are involved in the blood-brain barrier, and we talked about tight junctions. This video is going to tackle the physiological landmarks at which the blood-brain barrier is broken and the level at which it happens. So um, the blood-brain barrier is broken around the third and fourth ventricle, um, and there are seven landmarks in these areas right here that are called the circumventricular organs. So like I said, there are seven of them. There is a neurohypothesis, there is the median eminence, the OVLT, the subcommissural organ, the pineal gland, the subfornical organ, and the area posterior. One thing to note about the neurohypothesis is um, the neurohypothesis is also known as the posterior pituitary. So you got the pituitary gland over here, and the pituitary gland has two lobes, has the anterior lobe known as the anterior pituitary and the posterior lobe known as the posterior pituitary. Posterior pituitary is also known as the neurohypothesis. If you hear just the word hypothesis alone without the neuro in front of it, then we're talking about the entire gland, the pituitary gland. If you hear the word neurohypothesis, however, we're talking about the posterior uh, pituitary, so the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. So first, we're going to cover how these circumventricular organs work. Uh, they, are have, they have two main functions. The first one is that they act as physiological windows that open and close, and that's how the blood and brain, uh, the blood brain barrier is broken. Sorry, um, some of the glands, and I say some because not all the seven organs are glands. Some of them will secrete hormones through the windows, and then they will release them to the systemic circulation of the body. Um, for example, the posterior hypothesis or the neurohypothesis or the posterior pituitary, so all these terms are acceptable for that organ, will secrete oxytocin and vasopressin across these windows or the pineal gland which secretes melatonin. The other um, function of these organs is that they, all of them, all seven of them, no exception, will act as sentinels. A sentinel is just a guard who is on 24-hour watch like our little friend over here. And they will observe and they're on constant watch for how the blood levels are across the body. For example, area postrema, who's on constant watch for the um, gag reflex, for example. So getting to the posterior pituitary. This, in this gland, the blood-brain barrier is broken to release hormones by a fenestrated capillaries. So you got the posterior pituitary. And above it is the hypothalamus. Now, in the hypothalamus, you got two glands. You got the supraoptic nucleus. Sorry, not two glands, two nuclei. You got the supraoptic nucleus and you got the paraventricular nucleus. Each of these nuclei will produce a hormone. The paraventricular produces oxytocin, the supraoptic produces ADH, antidiuretic hormone, or vasopressin. These Hormones, once they're produced, so they're produced in the hypothalamus, they travel down the infundibulum through the hypothalamal hypophyseal tract to the posterior pituitary. Very important to note that the posterior pituitary does not produce any hormones. It only stores them and then secretes them once they're called for. They're called for via the fenestrated capillaries. Oxytocin is a hormone involved in the release of breast milk. Like unlike its cousin prolactin of the anterior pituitary, um, this is over here, actually is also produced uh, over here, is involved in the production of milk. But oxytocin um, is only involved in the release of breast milk. And then the antidiuretic hormone, vasopressin, has two primary functions. The first one is that it increases the amount of solute-free water um, reabsorbed back into the circulation from the filtrate of the nephrons, aka the kidneys. And then the second one is that it, inc it increases sorry, peripheral vascular resistance and it raises the arterial blood pressure. So this little um, diagram is just a little zoom in of um, the previous one right here. So just got the nuclear over here. You got the hormones. Paraventricular does the oxytocin. Superoptic does the ADH. They travel down the infundibulum via the hypothalamal hypothesial tract to the posterior pituitary where they are stored. 
and then once they are they need to be released the um, fenestrated capillaries will open up and then we'll release them so that's it for the first part of the circumventricular uh, organs and then uh, hopefully we'll see you for the remaining uh, six organs that was medicine in three minutes and thank you for watching